December 7. I want to uh, talk about the S&P, where we're at, where we're going the next few weeks. Um, before I do anything, I wanted to make a disclaimer that I can be wrong, and if I am wrong, you have to be willing to take responsibility for what you do, no matter what I say. The trades that you put on are based upon your interpretation of what I say, and it's important that you recognize that every trade should have some kind of a stop loss. You should be protecting your money. It's not something you want to sell your house <laughs> and put on any trade. Because ultimately, if you're right most of the time, you don't have to be betting dramatically on every single trade. You know, you just need to control the risk and eventually the markets will give you quite a bit. Okay, that being said, <clears throat> where we are in the market, we've been looking for a correction, started, um, came in on Monday, and the probabilities are right now that we're gonna go lower. The next swing low is probably in January, January 19th is where we're expecting the market to wind up. But before that, there's likely to be a low around December 23rd, this swing that started, and then a rally until the end of the month, December 30th, but a topping pattern that could continue all the way until January 11th, and then uh, the decline into January 19th would complete the thing. Now, it's interesting how at this point, even though the market came down, we are not 100% sure that we're going to just continue to go down directly. It's very likely, if you look at the charts that I'm going to show you, that we're on a, a meaningful support level two different ways. There's a horizontal support, which is generated by a proprietary model that I developed, which has been very effective for me. And we're also on a diagonal support, which is similar to what GAN might call a 45 degree angle or some GAN line, although these are not GAN lines. And in the first chart, you see the horizontal support, and you see how we're, we just reached it. And we have held there, and now it's a day and a half, two days, we've been uh, not been able to break that. And that is a fairly strong support. It doesn't break unless the market is really in a bad mood to go down, okay? And then if you look at the next chart, you see the diagonal support, the channel, the channels that are going roughly at 45 degrees, and the market just reached one of those channels. And those are pretty meaningful. As a matter of fact, you can see since the low in, uh, in October, it's been more or less adhering to that channel. And that channel is not the normal trend line, <laughs> so it's useful. The other thing is that uh, in the third chart here, you'll see how I put both of them together. We have both the horizontal and vertical at the same point. That's doubly strong. So it means that unless the market is extremely weak right here, which it might be, the probabilities favor we're going to get a bounce now. Today's the 7th. We could get a bounce into the 8th. And there are other possibilities, including that it could hold up or even bounce up into the 12th of the month, which is Monday. And if it does, it could be a decent rally. And that's the, probably not going to take out the most recent Monday's high on the 5th. Um, but it's likely to retest the trend line that it broke. There was an uptrend line that was broken, uh, which is important, which means there's a good chance the market will go lower. Price-wise, we reached our first support level, which was around 39.50. The cash was a little lower. The March futures, the low was around 39.51. So it did hold. And the likelihood is we'll reach up in the 4,000 area again on a bounce. The, re the trend line is a little above that. And that could happen over the next few days. There's a, apparently some economic reports on Thursday morning, and the market could go wild. If it does break today's low by more than a few ticks, then that's pretty bearish behavior. Uh, if it lasts longer than five minutes. Sometimes these reports come out and market shoots down and then later in the day, you know, or half an hour later, it shoots dramatically up. So don't get fooled by, uh, you know, five minute fluctuations. But if the market can break tomorrow, then we're looking at 3,700 as the next target area. And that could happen 
as early as the 23rd of December. And if it does happen, then the January 19th low could actually be lower than that. So our minimum expected target by January 19th and possibly by the 23rd of December is the 3700 area, but it's possible, it's still possible to take out that level and possibly even take out the 3500 level before the end of this swing down until January 19th. Uh, it depends on the timing. If it hits it on December, if it hits 3700 on the 23rd of December, I would get out of a short position because it's likely to bounce meaningfully up at least until the 30th and I wouldn't want to sit through that. But if you don't mind sitting through it, it probably would go lower in January. If it doesn't make it to 3700 by the 23rd of December, then it might very well just do a rally and then come back down in January and, and come down to the 3700 level then. In any event, that's where we're at. Now, after this January decline, the, the low there, we're probably going to see a rally uh, that will continue up into April. So it, this is a kind of a pullback in a uptrend that started in October and kind of began in, in, in June, but you had a slightly lower low in October. But it's, try, it's trying to do a rally. It's trying to bounce, trying to go up, you know, into next year. All right. The other thing I wanted to say was that if you look at this next chart, which is I find exciting, you know, it's seven months and five days ago. And it's not just seven months and five days from where we are. It's, it's a period of about eight or nine months with an interval of seven months and five days where one, uh, one line, one uh, curve is the recent market and the other one is right on top of it what happened seven months and five days earlier. Notice they're hanging on to each other. And the first chart here ends on November 21st. I couldn't get the whole thing on one chart, it's the way the software works. But going backward from November 21st, you see approximately about seven months of data. And that's incredibly accurate. It's 78% correlated. And in the following chart, I show what happens going forward. Now, it doesn't look exactly the same. It has to do with the way the software works. But the up and down moves will probably be continuing in a similar vein to what they are in this chart. And it goes forward it goes down first and then it has a bounce and then it goes down again into January 19th. I have January 19th marked a little bit in red so you can see it. Okay, so this is where we're at. This is likely where we're headed. The seven month cycle is generated by eight repetitions of the, the moon conjunct the nodes over and over and over and over, which is a meaningful. Uh, we talked about Rahu and K2 earlier and how it's a meaningful pivot oftentimes when the moon is conjunct with Rahu or K2, um, you get pivots. And it turns out eight of those, not only is it generating pivots, it's also generating a repetition of history. Uh, and something repeating for eight months is, it's not to be ignored. And if it continues, then the path forward would look something like what you see in the chart we just disclosed, okay? All right, I'm starting to give you some pretty Actually, this is secret stuff, you know, and um, I'm not going to give away the formulas. But I'd want you to have the benefit of the knowledge and um, I hope you use it well. And by the way, thumbs up are really great. <laughs> and uh, tell your friends and we'd like some more subscribers and we want to teach. I want to also be offering courses and you'll, you'll see uh, one of the videos we have a, a webinar that I designed to describe one of the courses that we've been giving and it's been very successful so far. Alrighty, thanks a lot. Have a good week.